and give me the speaker. With the speaker, I promise I will not be long. Um, I want, first of all, to compliment the Minister for Tourism for his stewardship so far, Mr. Speaker. And to, sometimes I, I, I tease him and on the staff that he has. He says he only has seven tourism officers, Mr. Speaker. If, when I was Minister for Tourism, I had a lot less than seven. But at that time, as one and about, no, two, there was two. And one of them, one of them are still in the ministry as we speak, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I, at that time they worked hard and now I'm sure they are working just as hard, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that tourism does what it does with commission. So I want to thank them for their work to improve the tourism industry, Mr. Speaker. And I want to warn them that I need more money for my budget. <laughs> so they have to deliver so that I can get some more revenue. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm very grateful to them, very grateful to the Minister and the People in the Solution Tourism Authority for their commitment to the industry, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I wanted this morning to go back a little into the where, how we got, where we got, and what was the philosophical underpinning as to why we got here. But Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition does not allow me to do that without I having to correct him. I want to use the word correct, Mr. Speaker. I'm in an independent mood today. I'm celebrating independence. So I'm going to use the word correct him, Mr. Speaker, on some of the things that he said. Mr. Speaker, he says that there is no schedule for tourism incentives, Mr. Speaker. And he says that nowhere in the bill is it, does they say, does the bill say what incentives we are giving the tourism industry? Mr. Speaker, the leader of the position, let me remind him. Schedule number two, incentives, additional incentives and incentives for resilience. Part A, incentives for tourism investment, corporate tax, income tax with regard to registered business, Import duty on imports of billing materials, equipment, furniture, fixtures, and fittings. Import duty on excise tax on articles for marketing and branding. Excise tax. Stamp duty on vendor's tax on the conveyance or transfer on sale of immovable property on the initial transfer. Property tax. Value added tax on buildings, materials, equipment, furniture, fixtures, and fittings. Withholding tax. Tax credit for financial institutions. Marketing support customer service training and capacity building, registration of business names and fees, work permit fees, alien land holding license fees. Part B, incentives for a tourism investment specialized support, digitalization, import duty and excise tax on equipment, withholding tax. B, low carbon and resource use, corporate tax, Import duty and excess, excise tax on equipment for low carbon and resource use. Withholding tax. Part C, additional incentives. Corporate tax, property tax, income tax, vendor's tax, withholding tax, stamp duty. Part D, incentives for resilience. A word that he doesn't like at all. He says the are not resilient. He says, you all make a joke and talk about resilience. But we have a incentives for resilience, Mr. Speaker. Incentives specified under Part A, value-added tax services, registration licensing fees for tourism transportation, grant funding, customer service charge, stamp duty on mortgages and loans, tourism certification fees, contract tax, corporation tax credit for employee retention. Schedule free tourism sectors, tourism accommodation, food and beverage, tourism transportation, recreation, meetings, incentives, 
conferences and event planners, tourism facilitation services and travel trade, tourism niche markets, and specialized support areas. Mr. Speaker, these... Member for Miku South. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the member is misrepresenting what I said. Um, I said that there are no specific. Member, member for Miku South. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Are you standing on a point of order? I am, Mr. Speaker. Anyway, what is the point of order? That the member is mis misrepresenting the words that I said, Mr. Speaker. Okay? I said that there are no specificity to any of the incentives. There is no specificity. No, no specifics to the incentives. Those are just general heads. When you go to the Incentive Act, Mr. Speaker, you'll see that it says if you have 20 rooms, that you will get a 15-year so tax holiday, etc. That's the where, but where, where, where are the regulations? You said you suspended the, Mr. Speaker, the member said in the bill, in the last part, that he has suspended the, the act. So where is it? It says it in the back of it. Let me read it for you. Okay, because I'm not seeing any of it. I don't see any of those of those specifics, right, that will tell anybody where the incentives are and how much it is. It is. It is. The member for Miku South is on his feet. Member for Castro South, and you will allow him to proceed accordingly. Thank you. Go ahead, member. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All I'm saying is, is that. That's why I made the reference. It's like we're going to stick the file into a, a, a hole and that whatever comes out, we don't know. We don't know what the expectation is. So when the member said that he's only going to give up to a 50% tax holiday, where is that written? That's not written anywhere. There's nothing in the bill. And I'm, I'm saying to you, it's a dangerous precedence to establish because if you're suspending the act, you would be suspending the schedule as well. So what is it that we, what, what can people realistically expect to get? when they apply for the incentives. Yes, I know all the headings are there. Those have member, always existed. Member, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Um, Go ahead, member from I, Castries East. I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, and if I am, if I made a mistake, what he doesn't like to say, I'll admit. I'm sure I heard him say there is no schedule. I'm sure I heard so. I'm sure I heard him say there is no schedule. But Mr. Speaker, I'm sure. Anyway, Mr. Speaker, but I just want to, to tell, I just want to inform, I want to inform Mr. Speaker, the investment community that, that this government, Mr. Speaker, intends to continue the incentive regime. We will continue the incentive regime, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, speaking about the history the history of tourism members is, uh, member for cast resist hold on member for cast resist hold on member for miku south and member for cast south the member for cast is is on his feet and i would appreciate if you would allow the member to be heard in silence go ahead member for cast resist thank you mr speaker if the member for miku south wants to go down memory lane as far as tourism is concerned, Mr. Speaker, he, he, he would agree, Mr. Speaker, that the government of the Labour Party has done the most effective, the most practical, and the most result-oriented initiatives for the tourism industry. Mr. Speaker, a few, Hotel Chocolat, Hotel Chocolat, Mr. Speaker, speaking about Sufren development and incentives and, and creating linkages, was a creation of the then Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Tourism. Hotel Chocolat. At the time, Mr. Speaker, at the time, I remember one of their strongest supporters on the radio were actually ridiculing the Hotel Chocolat. Chocolat chocolate issue. Ridiculing, Mr. Speaker, as usual. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, music and the music and causing music to be part of the tourism industry. Again, it was the Labour Party government through the National Development Corporation that gave musicians equipment free, engineering equipment to upgrade their music, to integrate music with the 
to visit me in the Mr. Speak. Again, it was the Leopard. I just want to go down memory lane a little bit because when you listen to some things that some people say, particularly younger people who really don't do not know or haven't learned or haven't been told the history of St. Lucia, you would believe, Mr. Speaker, that the only people, the only thing that ever happened in the tourism industry was between 2016 and 2011. You would believe that nothing, there was nothing there, Mr. Speaker, and it came this great visionary to transform the tourism industry. But that's not true, Mr. Speaker. That's not true. Many things happen in the industry. The, the philosophical underpinning of the industry, Mr. Speaker. Where after 9-11, it was our government that passed the, the tourism incentives, the additional tourism stimulus act. The tourism stimulus act, Mr. Speaker. We said that, listen, the industry had got hit by 9-11, by and there was need to increase the incentive package for, for investment industry. And it was this government, and I recall specifically again, we were criticized when we did that, Mr. Speaker, because at the time we were saying that you must create more incentives. So the history of incentives, the history of incentives, Mr. Speaker, is, is clear. We were the ones to give incentives to taxi drivers. You may recall, Mr. Speaker, when we saw the benefits of tourism again. We said that it took the taxi driving industry must be regularized, Mr. Speaker. We had a training program for taxi drivers and we brought the TX split that caused tax, and we gave them incentives, Mr. Speaker, so much so that taxi drivers were able to, to upgrade their fleet to give the industry a higher level of transportation. That was done by our government, Mr. Speaker. Now the Ministry of Tourism is re re reviving it, revising it, making it better. That's how it ought to work. You've got to start from a foundation and make it better, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the member for speaks about cruise, to cruise tourism and shopping. Cruise tourism and shopping. But when this government goes into a PPP with GPH, something that he started and did not continue, Mr. Speaker. He goes all over the place. And you see, Mr. Speaker, this world is a very small world. He goes all over the place, Mr. Speaker, and he says the most, the most outrageous things about St. Lucia, about the government, about the Minister of Tourism, about the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, and comes to his honorable house and pretends Mr. Speaker, but he's the one who is trying his best for GPH not to invest in this country, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, but he speaks about cross tourism and speaks about a PPP. The same thing, Mr. Speaker, he's speaking on both sides of his tongue, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the minister speaks about um, the brand name Tequila, and he, and he made the the a reference to a conversation he and I had. When you have conversations, Mr. Speaker, I remember very, very clearly a conversation we had in Puerto Rico when he was drinking tequila. But Mr. Speaker, I will not disclose the content of this conversation. I will not. I am above that. I'm not going to disclose it. But I remember that conversation very clearly, Mr. Speaker. He was drinking tequila. He was drinking either tequila or Bacardi, one of them. And I, and, and I remember he had, his, he, had his steak, he had his steak raw. He had his steak raw. And that was the first time I saw somebody, I saw a steak with blood. I saw him eating it. I'd never seen that before. I remember that play. I said to him, boy, I don't know, you, 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 you eating that? You know, he had a steak with blood. Two of us were there. But we're not going through that conversation with the speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I... I, that's in the book. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the member must not try to revise, revision his history, Mr. Speaker. But, you know, we're not going there. It's, it's independence. Okay. Mr. Speaker, the, the member speaks about, about the conversation again we had about Marshall. But as the same member, when I tried to bring jazz to the people in Marshall, he criticized me. And then, to add insult to injury, he said people should go and demonstrate in Marshall. 
That's why he said, he said, let him go and demonstrate in March, Mr. Speaker. But the same minister comes there and speaks about inclusive, being inclusive, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to say to the, to the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, that the tourism industry is extremely important to the well-being of this country. And when I made a statement that after COVID, my realization of the importance of the industry increased. As usual, they tried to make a whole story for Mr. Speaker. I repeat it again. I repeat it again, Mr. Speaker. And that is why I want to applaud the Minister for Tourism for bringing such an inclusive bill, Mr. Speaker. If you look at it, you will see that there is something in, in this bill for everyone, Mr. Speaker. It's a continuation of a philosophical underpinning to the tourism industry. That's, that's why it is, Mr. Speaker. It's a continuation to the Nature Heritage Tourism Program. It's a continuation to the opening of that gate to bring, and again, Mr. Speaker, when that happened, the short-sightedness. And you know, yesterday I said to the press, when I get criticized, or people try to misinterpret what I say, or misinform, it does nothing to me. Absolutely nothing, Mr. Speaker. Because all my life, I've remained focused on a goal. It's all my life, Mr. Speaker, I've remained focused. And if I did not remain focused, if I'd listened to the naysayers and the prophets of doom and gloom and the agents of misinformation, Mr. Speaker, with the help of the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, and the members of the St. Lucia Labour Party, I would never have been Prime Minister of this country. But, Mr. Speaker, I always remain focused. And this is why I will work with the Minister of Tourism. I will work with the, the partners in the tourism industry, Mr. Speaker to ensure that this industry lives to its full potential, Mr. Speaker, and creates the benefits of people, for people of this country. Mr. Speaker, again, looking at history and facts. I mean, I said today is not a day for that, but I have to do it. The member from Microsoft said he built a hotel in Rodney. He did not. No. He expanded on an existing hotel in Rodney Museum. The hotel that, that he bought, and if you, and if, and if you haven't re removed it, my name is supposed to be still at, at, at the hotel, you know. It's still there? What? My name was opened by the Honorable Philip J. Pierre. <laughs> what he got in the speaker was a hotel called Candio Inn. And then Candio Inn was, huh? His, well, I, I want to get involved in who? Candio Inn, Mr. Speaker, then it changed to Coke. And then there was Islander, Islander Hotel, a fellow called American Drywall, and a guy called Glass, yeah. with the owners of Can and that And that, that was destroyed. It was broken down, Mr. Speaker, and then they expanded. But the fact is, Mr. Speaker, the member... But I was destroyed. Okay, fine. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. But the point is, Mr. Speaker, that there was already a, a hotel there. He didn't build a hotel in Rodney B. Anything. Just, just to make the history a little clearer, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Talking about airlines again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Tourism, I want to say he made an error, Mr. Speaker. He said that the Tourism Advisory Committee was formed by this government. But that's not true. That is 
in Accra Business Week. The TAC existed before. It was headed by a fellow called Noel Kadas and, the mem and the mem was a member of the TAC Business Week. You see, some, I, don't, some, I don't like to talk and boast and pretend things. Maybe Business Week, there are many things that happen in this country, Business Week. If I ha really have to, to explain what happens at Twitter, the truth will come to light. But I allow people to speak and write and do it. But the the real truth, the truth, one day the truth will be revealed, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to end talking about social partnerships. It's extremely important, Mr. Speaker, that we understand what happens to families with because of some aspects of the tourism industry. Very important, Mr. Speaker, it's very important. Last week in this Honorable House, I spoke about the shift system in schools, where children use to have to spend half day in schools, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, and I'm very happy that there'll be increased incentives for hotels who show that social consciousness. Look at a family, a new family, a modern family, Mr. Speaker, where both parents work in an hotel. Both parents work in a hotel, Mr. Speaker. You find that many times, Mr. Speaker, the children are unsupervised because their parents are at work. And when a social partnership is created, where the hotels, and I want to congratulate Sanders for the for the, the, the move, Mr. Speaker, where the hotels can find a way to cause that dislocation that may arise from families being away from each other or parents being away from their children because of the employment in industry, Mr. Speaker, it must be applauded. And any move that would increase the level of incentives for hotels to expand or improve that social partnership, Mr. Speaker, must be complimented, Mr. Speaker, because the foundation of the, the, the country, Mr. Speaker, the foundation of any country is in its families and is what happens at the home, Mr. Speaker. So I commend the social partnership idea, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, recently St. Lucia has experienced some level of gun violence, an increase of gun violence, Mr. Speaker. And in the interest of St. Lucia and in the interest of those who pretend to love St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, let us not sensationalize this gun violence that exists in this country. You heard this morning the opposition almost gloating that a, an, an advisory had been placed on St. Lucia by Canada, which is gloating that an advisory had been placed on St. Lucia by Canada. Almost gloating, Mr. Speaker. Last week, they were predicting that what happened in two other Caribbean islands would happen in St. Lucia very soon, Mr. Speaker. Gloating, waking up actually wishing that bad befall on this country because they are not those, they are not the ones who are administering this country, Mr. Speaker. I want to implore, I want to tell Mr. Speaker, stop it, stop it, stop it. It does not augur well for the country, it doesn't augur well for the tourism industry, Mr. Speaker, and there is nothing to be gained by Nothing to be gained, Mr. Speaker, by promoting that kind of behavior for cheap political motives, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the matter of small hotels, Mr. Speaker, and I recall when I was Minister of Tourism, we were promoting something called STEP. Not the STEP you know, a STEP, Mr. Speaker, to encourage to market small hotels collectively. And I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, that in the Tourism, the community tourism project, Mr. Speaker, there is, and I'm sure the minister will expand, Mr. Speaker, there is initiatives for joint marketing of the small hotels in this country. And again, revisionist history, Mr. Speaker, the member from Microsoft speaks about local hotels that, that have failed, Mr. Speaker. But 
some of the most successful hotel properties in this country are owned by locals. Bay Gardens, Luspo, Coco Palm, <laughs> Humming Bull, are owned by locals. There is a basic reason why some hotels, some hotels, some local hotels did not survive. But to paint a brush as if local hotels do not survive and, who can, and hotel, local hotels film is, is not accurate and I think we should desist from that practice, Mr. Speaker. We must encourage local people to go into hotels. We must help them, Mr. Speaker. We must promote them. We must help them. We must give them incentives that are real. And that is why I read the schedule of incentives that are available for the hotel industry, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I promise I will not be long, but I really want to see, I give my full approval, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this bill was, again, because our style, this bill was circulated to the public before it came to the cabinet, right or wrong? Yes, it was circulated for discussion, long discussion, before it came to the cabinet, just like the tax bill. That's our style. We let it, we let it allow it to be discussed on the outside before it comes to the cabinet. This tourism bill was the same, was a bill that was discussed by all stakeholders in the speaker. I mean, the speaker, the minister will clarify the 50% he spoke of. The minister said that you will start the 50%. He never said it is limited to 50%. He said you will start. You will start the 50% and then it will increase, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, sometimes it, it baffles me, Mr. Speaker. Why can people deliberately misinform? Deliberately misinform, Mr. Speaker. And even in the face of reality and the truth, Mr. Speaker, there is still misinformation. Fact is, St. Lucia's <laughs> tourism industry has progressed rapidly and is continuing to progress, Mr. Speaker. Both in terms of tourism arrivals, and there must be a metric to measure. There must be a metric. And the metric that we use now is arrivals, and the expansion of that metric is the TSA. The tourism, the, the tourism satellite accounting. Tourism satellite accounting, Mr. Speaker, started when I was Minister of Tourism. It was something by the World, the World Tourism Council, ZWTC, that decided that this is me. The, the, the tourism industry impacted on many aspects of the country, and we had to put it together, and the traditional national income accounting would not account for the impact of tourism, Mr. Speaker. So nothing really to, 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 to believe it's some guru that invited that, that invented it, Mr. Speaker. Just like right now we're speaking about a vulnerability index because all these countries are called middle income countries. And we're saying that the level of their vulnerability is so high because of hurricanes and climate change that you have to use a different metrics to measure their, their ability to, 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 to get in, Mr. Speaker. So, 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 Mr. Speaker, fact is, arrivals are one metric by which you measure. But there are other set, there are other areas by which you measure, Mr. Speaker. There are other areas. So, we have to talk about the arrivals. We have to speak about the increase in arrivals. But also, we also have to, to, to ensure, as we are doing with the tourism incentives and the expansion of the industry, and the Airbnb industry, Mr. Speaker, that people benefit from the industry. So I want to align myself with, with this bill. I want to align myself with a philosophical approach that this government and the ministry is taking for the, for the industry. I want to align myself with that, Mr. Speaker. I think it's novel, Mr. Speaker. And to say it's a good initial try, Mr. Speaker, is an understatement. But that is, that is what the opposition, the opposition is about always denigrating something, Mr. Speaker. Always finding ways and means 
to, to, to get personal, Mr. Speaker. But I align myself, I support the Tourism Development Act, Mr. Speaker, and I know when the regulations are tabled and we, and we read the regulations, we'll find answers or we'll find the answers to what appears in the members of Miguel's eyes to be inconsistencies, Mr. Speaker. I support this bill, I applaud the Minister of Tourism and his staff, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to the continued expansion of the industry to benefit the people of St. Lucia, to benefit the people of St. Lucia. And I make no apologies for saying that the people of St. Lucia must benefit. The workers in the hotel industry. And that is why one of my first actions with the help of the, of the Prime Minister was to remove service charge on tips paid in the hotel. We removed taxes on service charge and tips paid in the hotel. It's a deep philosophical belief that I have that the the greatest industry or the largest industry in the country must benefit the people of this country. <coughs> and no one, no one, in spite of all the, 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 the misinformation and the jobs and things, can tell me that the people of this country, if they do not benefit from the industry, if they are not paid proper wages, if they are not given proper working conditions, if they are not taught to sell the industry, no matter how, many money, how much money you spend on marketing, Mr. Speaker, if you keep the people out, if you ostracize them, you may not believe that this thing is not for them, Mr. Speaker, the industry will not serve its purpose, which is, one, to create a better quality of life, and two, to profit let the investors profit from the industry. The people who invest in the industry at all levels must profit from it. They must make money for the investment. Even though as a member for, for Castries South East said, and I wasn't there when that happened, and I, can, I hope he speaks the truth, that we were then, I, he spoke the truth, that, I, that we were then aggrated for none of us having to run our own businesses. Is that, that happened for you? I was out of the But that shows, that shows where we are, Mr. Speaker. That shows, Mr. Speaker, where we are. That shows, Mr. Speaker, where we are. That shows our mentality, Mr. Speaker. But that is not altogether true because many of us had our run our own businesses. The member for, for Sufre run her, her own business, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, just to end, Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, there is really a philosophical difference in this government, Mr. Speaker. I heard the member for Castus North say when he was a young man, he sold trinkets to tourists by the moon. You want to go ahead? The moon lay by Mr. Speaker. And you know, this is the humility and the philosophical difference, Mr. Speaker. And I want young and I want young people, Mr. Speaker, to understand that. That is why we that is why, Mr. Speaker, we are promoting the youth economy. For that reason, that's why you want to call me. For people like him, instead of they being attacked for saying that never run any business, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, no member in this honorable house ever says that they run a business or they are businessmen or they run government like a business. You know what you say? We say we run government for people. That's what we say. Not as a business. We run government for people, Mr. Speaker. And that is why, that is why we need the tourism industry, Mr. Speaker, to develop our people. Because it's through the tourism industry, we are going to be able to finance one university graduate for every household. And it's through the tourism industry, Mr. Speaker, we are, being, we are going to be able to create sports men and women like Julian Alfred, Dan Sami, etc. It's for the industry. 
that is why, Mr. Speaker, it's fully in the industry, Mr. Speaker. We are going to continue and fund universal health care, Mr. Speaker. And it's through the industry, Mr. Speaker, we can remove VAT on building materials so ordinary, regular people can get a proper quality of life. That's what the industry does to us. That's what the industry is doing for us, Mr. Speaker. And we hold, we, we make no bones about it. The industry must benefit the people of St. Lucia, but the people, I want to repeat myself. I want to repeat myself. I won't repeat myself, but the people who invest must make money. The people must. So when they, they go all over the country and say that the Labour Party is anti-business, the Labour Party is anti-business, Mr. Speaker. I want to make it clear to an investment community out there that we believe you must make money. You must make money. The return you invest on your investment must be as high as possible, but you cannot do it on the backs of the people of St. Lucia. But the people of St. Lucia must benefit also, so they can improve the quality of life and the standard of living, Mr. Speaker. That's our philosophical position, and that's the position we'll stand by, and that is the position that this government will pursue. And this, that is why we think that the tourism industry must be given all the support because we believe that the linkages that will come out of the industry, the linkages, if they are properly nurtured, Mr. Speaker, can improve the quality of life for all the people of this country. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.